Good morning. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is a wonderful, wonderful morning. Uh, God has blessed us with a new month. This is the second day of the month of November, a day that the Lord has given us that we may be able to thank him, to serve him, to worship him, and also to celebrate his goodness. Now, brethren, it is always important, and it, we have taught ourselves that we don't take things for granted. In fact, at this time, of the coach of the coronavirus we have learned and one of the important lessons that i have learned in my life that we can never ever take anything for granted being alive it is a blessing being in association with others is a blessing be in places that we used to think that uh, islam is a must to be there it is a blessing relating with people closely and relatives and even people that matters to us it is a blessing and even having a new day a day of peace a day of grace, it is a blessing. And therefore, we want to receive this day and this month of November and also this new week with thanksgiving in our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be part of what we are doing in this very month. Thank you for including us in the month of November. Thank you for including us in this new week. Thank you for including us in this new day. And Father, as we pick up your word, we pray that you continue to minister to us. Speak to us, O God, through your word that we may continue to know and understand your will, that your blessings and grace may be able to continue to be multiplied in our lives. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, my brother and sister, you know, we have had uh, a month of dealing with issues of prayer and fasting. Remember, we have been having a journey of several things that we have been able to learn every month. And last month we said, we're going to be practically be able to do that which we had learned about prayer and about fasting and i want to thank god that god has given us grace that in the month of october it was a beautiful wonderful month to have an experience with god to engage with god in prayer to thank him and i know god gave us important and amazing revelation about our families about our church about the nation of kenya and the lord was able to and add some of the important things that we are going to continue following up about the things that are important to us but now, brethren, this new week and this new month, we have decided that we need also to take time to thank God and also to see the things and to learn the things that are able to show us or we use so that we can be able to show gratitude to God. And do you know what? This is a month of giving, a month of giving praise to God, a month of giving glory to God, a month of giving sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. A, manner of honor, a month of honoring our vows, may it be tithing, may it be anything that we promise God, may it be our offering. There is a month that we are going to stand before God in reference to him, in honor to him, and also being able to bring, give back, worth back to him. You remember David one time when he realized what God had done for his life and he was so excited, he asked himself, what can I give back to God? And he realized that God owns everything. But he said, I will lift up my cup for salvation unto him. And you know what we are doing? In this, in this new month of November, we want to end well. And one of the things we're going to do is to show God it's truly that we love him and we care for him. We want to give worth back to him. And therefore, it will be a month of giving. And giving is giving our lives fully to God, being sold up to God, giving our praises back to God, giving our offerings free, free so that the Lord in his blessings, he may continue to bless us and to prepare us to cross over even from the, to the year 2020 to the year 2021, even as we get to the month of December. You know, the month of December is a crossover. It's a crossover. And we want, as we cross over, we may be able to find God's mercy and grace. Now, this morning, I want to bring to you three important uh, and uh, three important things that we need to understand about the power of thanksgiving and the power of a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Number one, I want to remind us that thanksgiving prayer and thanksgiving sacrifice does three things. Number one, it uh, preserves life. Number two, it uh, brings and restores life. And number three, it uh, brings down the glory of God. Let us start with how we can be able to understand that the thanksgiving prayer have power has power to preserve life and be able to re uh, to re uh, in, in fact the the word is to renew to renew the covenant of God life even in our lives in the book of Genesis chapter eight leading from verses twenty it says then Noah built an ark 
an altar to the Lord, and there was a sacrifice of a burnt offering. The animals and the birds that they had proved uh, the, uh, that he had uh, that he they, they had been approved for that purpose. And the Lord was pleased with his with the aloma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again cast the ground because of the human lays, even though everything they think or imagine is bent towards evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. And as long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer, winter, day and night. Now, brethren, before I jump to chapter 9, I want to remind us that one of the important things that the Thanksgiving prayer does, you remember this is Noah and his family. And this was the only family that was saved from the floods. But you know what they do? By the way, there are times I have learned, if God really wants to bless you, to increase you, and to give you dominion, there is that wisdom that he drops in your heart and in your spirit on how to do things. Do you ever know that God orders the hearts of his own so that he can be able to take them into the ways of righteousness and to the way of blessing? The, the friend of God, David, in the book of Psalms 23, you remember he mentions when he declares that God is his shepherd, he also mentioned an important thing. He says, he leads me in the ways of righteousness for his, his namesake. In other words, it is not him. It is God who leads him in the paths of righteousness. And what the Bible says, what the Bible says about righteousness, this is what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, that righteousness exalteth a nation. Righteousness exalteth a nation. But wickedness is reproach to any people. And for God to exalt us and to bless us, for God to lift our standards and our levels, he leads us to the ways of righteousness. And one way of righteousness is the wisdom of thanksgiving. Do you know, we are built and created to be men and women who grumble, who count on what they have not received more than what they have received, who see the longs and the negatives more than the positive. Do you know what God wants us? That we may be able to change our mindset, that we may be able to start counting on our blessings, to see who God is to us and the things he has done that we can be able to. Me, I'm a parent, and I know what it means that when my son or my daughter comes to me after I have done something and they tell me, Daddy, I'm very grateful. The feeling of that word, just a word of saying thank you, the feeling of the word thank you is a feeling of refreshment. And that refreshment and renewal, you can be able to do a better thing and even a bigger thing. And for that reason, when God was able to, to guide Noah, one of the things that he did when they, 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 they came out to the ground, they gave a sacrifice. They made an altar and made a sacrifice before God. And when that sweet aroma of the sacrifice rose to the heavens, do you know what happens? God declared that he will preserve the life not only of Noah, but also of the human race. That he will never again destroy and he says, an amazing thing that he says, that though the heart of man is always inclined to evil, even from childbirth, that he will be able to preserve them. He will not destroy them. Do you know what we need, brethren? It's preservation of our lives. And you know why? There is a secret. There is a cord. There is a secret cord of thanksgiving. When we give a sacrifice of thanksgiving before God, he preserves lives. Number two, God is able to bring forth that which is dead to life. And the story is given of a gentleman called uh, Lazarus. You remember Lazarus? And Lazarus was a friend of Jesus Christ. And I want to remind us that Lazarus was a man that at least uh, lived and died. And when Jesus was invited and called, he never came in good time. But when he came, he realized that three days already were done when Lazarus was in the tomb. So the guy was smelling, and therefore every hope of life had come to a cross. And therefore, even you remember his sister saying, you know, you don't even need to bother my, uh, my Mwarimu. Now, you know what you need to do? Just allow that guy to rest in peace. We wanted so much if you have been around. And he said, if you were around, we knew that you could have done a miracle. But you remember he said, you know, you just need to trust and believe. Now, this is an amazing thing. The mourners are shouting and crying. The, the sisters of Lazarus have lost their, their faith. Jesus is standing on the tomb. And the tomb already is open and the smell is coming out. And he's standing at a smelly. You know, the smell is a proof that there is no life. That true deadness is standing before him. 
But you know what he chooses to do? To lay his voice and his eyes into the heavens. And the Bible tells us that he called unto heavens. Remember, can you listen to this prayer? An amazing prayer. One of the things that he does in uh, John chapter 11, verses 41. So they rolled out the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to the heavens and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You can imagine that what he is doing, he is giving a, a, a prayer of thanksgiving that I lead my voice and my eyes to you because you listen to me. In other words, he did not just start crying sometimes the way we do and say, God, now this time around, please hear me. Please hear me. And you know, it's not bad to do that. Please have mercy. But he just lose, raised his voice and said, I thank you that you always hear my prayer. Amazingly. And you know what happens? When he gave that thanksgiving prayer, and he said that you always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. You know, brethren, for us and the world and us to believe that God is with us and living in us, we must learn to thank him because of his power, authority, his ability to do the things that are, we are unable. Even the same smelling situation in your marriage, the smelling situation in your career, the smelling situation in your health, the smelling situation, that thing that you're almost giving up and you have said, I know that now I need to live with it. You remember that even that stubborn issue can give way to a prayer of thanksgiving. And brethren, let us learn the wisdom of giving sacrifices. Sometimes just go before God and give a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell God, you know what, God, I want to thank you because even this issue about my kid, you are able. You are always able and capable. Even on all this issue of my and, uh, business that I have stalled, even then you are able to do it. And when he did that, this is what the Bible tells us, that immediately there is something that he did. He now shouted and said, Lazarus, come out. Then the dead man came out. There was life. In other words, the thanksgiving prayer brings forth life. It was able to restore life. And not only that, it also broke the chains of deadness. Because when the guy came out, the Bible says that the man came out and his hands and feet were bound in grave clothes. His face lumped and head uh, uh, in a in a in a head cloth jesus told them a lap and lap him and let him go do you know we need freedom not only life but freedom and deliverance that we can be able to go about with our businesses and you know jesus says that this dancing in prayer when he prayed he was able to call forth the deadness into life and not only that he was able to declare freedom even from the life that came you know sometimes we can come to life and things can start learning, but we realize that they have things that are touched and they are, are putting them down. Like the way we, we release the kite and the kite is flying in the air, but you see we hold it with a small string and therefore we can be able to uh, joke around with it, pull it down and up and all this stuff. And therefore it's good to tell you, brethren, it is important to know that there are God's wisdom. There is God's wisdom when we accept that we give sacrifices of thanksgiving. We make prayers of thanksgiving. And we find not only life back to us, but we also find deliverance and freedom. And finally, and finally, very fast, brethren, it is good to let you know that it is important that the thanksgiving prayer also bring down the presence of God. You know, for us to connect with God's presence in the heavenly sanctuary, it is important also to know that God in his own wisdom has called us that we may be able uh, to learn the power of thanksgiving. Now, this is a man called Solomon, and Solomon, God gave him wisdom. And one of the wisdom that we see with Solomon is when he believes that the work of the temple is done, and now he starts to have a new way of worship, even in the temple. But do you know how he does it? He started, and amazingly, I love it, he started with a thanksgiving prayer. This is what the Bible says in the book of 2 Colonicus chapter 5, and verses um, 6. Therefore, the ark of the, the, uh, before the ark, King Solomon and the entire community of Israel sacrificed so many sheep and goats and cattle that no one could count them. And verses 13 to 14 says, 13 to 14, And the trumpeters and the singers performed together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord, accompanied by the trumpets and cymbals and the other instruments. They laid their voices and praised the Lord with these words. This is what they say, 
He is good. His faithful love endures. At the moment of the crowd filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not continue their service because of the cloud for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of God. You know, brethren, as we come to a cross, if there is anything we desire, brethren, if there is something I've already desired in my life, it's God's presence. You know, you might be able to have all the other things, but if you lose God's presence, and no wonder one time David told God, you know, one of the things I want to pray is that your presence may not depart from me, that your spirit may not, uh, may not leave me. And you know, it is important to realize that one of the things that we need to pursue is God's presence, because in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is counsel. There is wisdom. God makes ways where there's no way. When we know the presence, and that's why he told the children of Israel that they must go with the Ark of Covenant. The Ark of Covenant was just a symbol, a symbol of God's presence. And when the presence of God was with them, even Jordan could not stand the presence of God. And brethren, even Jericho could not stand the presence of God. And therefore, that's why I would desire, and I, my desire is this morning, as we come to a cross, that we remember that a thanksgiving prayer brings down the presence of God and the glory of God. You remember when they did that sacrifice, that the glory of God came as a crowd, filled the temple, that even the priests in the temple could not normally go with their work because the presence was so heavy and the presence of God reassured them of his grace in their lives. May the Lord, by his grace, bring life back to your life. Not only that, may the Lord continue to bring life the things that are dead. And finally, may the presence of God, through a thanksgiving prayer and sacrifice, continue to bring down the presence of God. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.